people of God said. Amen. And this gospel of the kingdom, say kingdom, kingdom, shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Pastor Miles, you, if I may use the term, blew me away last week. You, precious saints, saw the programs from the Bahamas, and I've asked that he would come back and continue because what you said was so life-changing. It's got to be said again and again and again. We are not a democracy. We are not a republic. We are a kingdom. Yes. Would you talk about that? Yes. My uh... God, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> he got me so thrilled last week, I was really behaving myself. I, we had, you know, government people on the front row, so I had to be real, you know, careful. But today, brother, we in Jerusalem. I am in Jerusalem. <laughs> if something, if, if, if something happens to me and I get up and just shout, <laughs> join me. Okay, I'm ready. The Bible, first of all, is about a royal family. Yeah. It's not about religion. The Bible is about three things. It's about a king. It's about a kingdom. And it's about his kids. The Bible is about the story of a king. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. Yeah. He is the king of glory. <laughs> so open the gates yes. and let the king of glory come in. Yeah. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. Right. He is the king. king. Not the president, not the prime minister, not the mayor, but he is king of glory. Yeah. He came with a great idea. God is king of glory, and he had an idea. His idea was to extend his heavenly kingdom, which is invisible, to another realm called earth, which is a this physical realm. So God's original plan was to extend his heavenly kingdom to earth through his kids. In other words, it's a family business where God wants to extend his family business to another dimension and do it through his offspring. What kind of business is God in? It's very clear. He's in the business of dominion, rulership. That's his business. He, he is the ruler. He's the king of glory. He is the Lord of hosts, the mighty ruler. And he wanted to extend his rulership to the seen world from the unseen world and do it through his offspring. Mm. Therefore, the Smart. word dominion is important to understand. The word dominion, I'm sure all of the Bible scholars here would know that the word dominion has, it can, it, in the Hebrew translation of the Bible is the word mamlakak. Mamlakak simply means kingdom. It means sovereign rule. That's the exact same word God gave to Adam. Yeah. Let us make man in our own image and let them have mamlakak, dominion, kingdom, over the fish, the birds, the cattle, the trees, and the creeps. Yes. Okay. In the New Testament is the word, Greek word basilia. Same meaning, it means mamlakak or it means dominion, kingdom. My point is this, the first thing God gave Adam was not a religion. He gave Adam kingdom. All of us were given kingdom. What is a kingdom? A kingdom is two words put together. It's the word king and dominion. King means the person, ruler, and dominion means the domain. There's no king without territory. That's why the first thing God made for Adam is territory. He had to make the earth first so that the man could have something to rule. A kingdom must be the relationship between a king and his domain. It's called a kingdom. God is called the king of glory because glory is his domain. The heavenly is his domain. Wow. He is king, ruler over that domain. So it's called the kingdom. And the name of the place is heaven. Heaven is an actual place. And he is the king over heaven. So he's called the king over his domain called heaven. So he's called the kingdom of heaven. Now God's great idea was to extend his heavenly kingdom to another realm. But no other realm existed. So what did God do? He creates one. That's why the universe exists. Because God's idea was to extend his rulership from the unseen to the seen. So he creates a seen realm. There are 500 million planets today and they're still finding new ones. God did all of that because he wanted to extend his rulership to a seen realm. 
He created it, and then he did a program. I'll do it through my kids. So God says, let us now create the realm. In Genesis 1, verse 1, it says God created the heavens, his territory, yeah. and the earth. That's the kids' territory. <laughs> he put everything on it. He put everything to sustain life. And when it was finished, he says, this is good. Verse 26, now let us have the kids. <laughs> let us make man in our own image. image the yeah. word image means character, moral nature, spirit nature. In other words, let's have kids just like us. That means we got his nature. That's why we hate to be told what to do. We are built to rule everything. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Rulership is not something extra for us. It's natural for humans. That's why every human here today and watching this program, they are not built to be oppressed or to be controlled by anybody. We have the nature of our father. The word father in Hebrew is ab, it means source. We, have this, we came from the source that is filled with dominion. Whoa. And God gave us dominion, but he had to give us something to rule because you can't have a ruler without a realm. You can't have a king without a domain. That's right. So God made the domain first. Then he said, this is good. He said, now let's make the ruler. And out man came out of God's spirit. And God said, now let them have dominion over the fish, the birds, the cattle, over all the earth yeah. and all that creeps upon it. In other words, God gave the man the realm he has to rule. See, every king must have a domain. So God created the earth just for us, the kids, to have some place to rule so we act just like daddy. Hey, I love it. <laughs> in Psalm 115, verse 16, one of the most pow powerful verses in the Bible, it says, the highest heavens belong to the Lord, yes. but the earth, earth he gave given. to the children of men. Yeah. In other words, our rule up here, you guys rule down there. This is my realm up here, that's your realm down there. You have kingdom over the earth. Now, this is very important, Pastor Benny, because when Adam sinned, the question is, what did he lose? Well, you cannot lose what you were never given. Adam was never given heaven. He was given earth. earth yes. So when Adam disobeyed God, the word sin is the Hebrew word rebellion. It actually means rebellion against authority. So the word sin is when Adam rebelled against the known will of God, the authority of God. He lost legal control over the planet because he gave up this control to an unemployed cherub. Unemployed, notice the word. The devil is unemployed. <laughs> and suddenly, the earth became controlled by an illegal, unemployed cherub. You remember when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness? Yeah. Satan offered him something. He offered him the kingdoms of the earth. And he said, because they were delivered unto me. That's right. By what? Treason, of course. Of course. Adam committed treason. God entrusted us with the planet Earth. We had the management contract. That's important. God gave us rulership, but he never gave us ownership. That's important. So when Adam lost the management contract and he gave it up to this unemployed cherub, that means Adam lost king dominion over Earth. He lost the kingdom over Earth. To all, in order for you to understand Jesus Christ when he walked through the city, you have to understand what Adam lost. Adam did not lose a religion. He didn't lose a list of do's and don'ts. He didn't lose some, some strange, mystical, uh, you know, list of, of, of traditions. Adam lost a kingdom. He was a ruler. Adam was a king over earth. Adam lost the kingdom. That's right. So if you want to know what Adam lost, study what Jesus brought back to earth. It's not difficult to find out what man lost. Study what Jesus bought. Jesus was 30 years old. He walked from the north down. He came north here. And he, his cousin, John the Baptist, was baptizing in the Jordan River, not too far north from here. And Jesus left a little village. At 30 years old, he met his cousin. He went to see him. And he bowed before him. And John baptized him. The Holy Spirit came upon him in that water. We all know the story. He came out of it. The, the, the voice witnessed that this is my son, and from that day he began his ministry. It says he went to the desert, not too far from here, and he spent 40 days there, and he's being tested and pre preparing himself for his earthly assignment. When he finished there for 40 days, the Bible says the Spirit of God came upon him without measure, and he began his earthly ministry right here in this land. The Bible says when he left the desert, Matthew 4 verse 17 introduces his earthly ministry. With one statement, he gave his mission statement in Matthew 4, 17. It says, and from that time forward, 
Jesus began to preach, quote, repent, for the kingdom of heaven has arrived on earth. In other words, whatever he bought, that's what Adam lost. Now, if you read every page from that point on, you'll be amazed. I, I did a, 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 a little study for our viewers here today because I want you to see that the only thing that Jesus preached was the kingdom. Uh, Matthew 4, 17. Here's something that I, and I pulled this up on my computer the other day, and I was astounded to see that every page of his gospel was the same message. He never preached prosperity. He never preached faith. He never preached healing. He never preached deliverance. He, why? Because all of those are in the kingdom. Whoa, whoa. I love it. See, Matthew 4, 17. From that time forward, he began to preach. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Luke 4, 43. And he said, I must preach the kingdom of God, the good news, to other towns also, because that is why I was sent, it says. Mm. And he continued to preach. Luke 9, 2. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Now, every time he mentioned kingdom of God, he mentioned heal the sick. Or, you know, cast out demons or raise the dead. Here's why. Because the kingdom is a government. It's not a religion. And every time he mentioned the word kingdom, he was referring to the influence of a king over a territory impacting it with his will and his purpose. Now, in 1954, I was born under a kingdom in the Bahamas. We were ruled by a king. We, we were not a democracy at that time. So all my life was under a kingdom. So I understand the Bible. The Bible is about a king. Christ is not a mayor. He's not a prime minister. He's not a president. All those are voted into power. Kings are not voted into power. They're born kings. When the angels came to, 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 to Jerusalem, I mean to Bethlehem, not too far from here, they said, we came, if they were singing, a king is born. The yes. shepherd says, we come to see a king who's born. The wise man says, a king is born. Why? Kings are born. You don't vote them into power. Oh. So you can't get rid of Christ because you never voted him in. Oh. Very important. You see, one of the most amazing things you got to understand. Oh, I'm loving this, <laughs> brother. I'm just loving it. Now, his first, wow. his first sermon we call it the attitudes to be. <laughs> but his first sermon is found in the next chapter. Now, in chapter 4, he introduces himself. He says, I come to bring the kingdom of That's heaven exactly on earth. Right. Don't forget now, the kingdom is not a religion. A kingdom is the rulership of a king okay, over exactly. a territory, Fine. impacting that territory with his will, his intent, and his purpose. Excellent. So a king is an actual government. Let me explain. Isaiah chapter 9, a verse, chapter we always read all the time. But we miss a, a verse in there. It says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The next statement says, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. Right. To understand that, you can understand how they used to do work in the east here. In the eastern countries, in, during the time of Jesus, whenever a slave was, was, was uh, working for his master, they would make a yoke for the slave. The yoke had to fit his neck. Very important. So everyone in this room has a, has a neck, obviously. But our necks are different. Each size is different. That's why when we go to buy shirts and things, we got to give them our size because the, the neck is different. Every slave that worked for a master had a piece of wood that was carved with a, with a neck brace that could fit his neck. On the ends of that, he carried buckets or, or pieces of leather to carry things in. Now, whenever you were under a master, Whatever you had in those buckets belonged to the master. You go get corn, you go pick up things for the master, you yeah. go to the farm, and you come with this yoke, a human yoke, and you bring everything back with you. Whatever you had, Pastor Benny, belonged to the master. That's important. In other words, whatever was in your yoke was not your property. You are a slave. You are a servant. Jesus was referring to this. In Isaiah 9, it says, upon his shoulders, he's coming, not only as the son of God, he's bringing in his bucket a government. The next verse says, and to his government there shall be no end. The next verse says, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, etc. The next verse says, and he shall reign on the throne of the man who built that mountain kingdom, David. And he says, and of his kingdom there shall be no, no end. end. He's not bringing a religion. The number one problem in the world today is religion. Yeah. And we keep giving people religion. Jesus came to bring a government. Wow. He is what? The servant. Now, the whole chapter of Isaiah says he's the suffering servant. He's the slave. He brings in his shoulders, in the bucket, the kingdom, mm. the government of God. Mm. It says, and Jesus said, why are you so weighted down 
with so much religion and so much heavy weight. He says, come unto me, all you are heavy laden, and I'm going to give you rest from all this religious activity. Why? Well, take my yoke <laughs> upon you. you. Why? Yeah. It fits your neck. Leadership fits your neck. Rulership fits your neck. He says, the yoke I'm carrying, I can take it off me, and I came to put it oh, on you Jesus. because the kingdom belongs to you. It is my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It says, oh, seek God. ye first the, the kingdom. kingdom and his righteousness, and everything you've been trying to go after will come after you. Why? It's in the kingdom. i got to have a praise break. Come on, people. We're we, we got, we got to have a praise break here. Jesus. Jesus. We give you the glory, Lord. We give you the glory, Lord. Father, we pray today oh, in the God, name of us. Jesus. Help us, Lord. Reveal this truth to help us. us Lord. Lord, we've been living, uh, so help many Jesus. of us, Jesus, Jesus, we've been living Jesus. In, 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 a, in a wrong Jesus. world. Jesus. Please, Jesus. Master, Jesus. I pray every child of yours watching this program today you, will know who they are in you. Yes, Kings Jesus. and priests yes. unto our God. Jesus. Jesus. And I want your people to live mightily and powerfully in these last days in Jesus' name. Oh, people, lift your hands and praise Him. Come on. Ask Him for the anointing. Ask Him for the power of God. It belongs to you as God's kids. Let them have dominion, power, dominion. The anointing of God is yours. We are not. Hear this, what he said earlier. Our God is a king. How dare you be a slave? Hallelujah. How dare you be in bondage? You are to rule. Yes. Yes. Father, in Jesus' name, put your people back on the mountaintop. Yes. To reign and rule in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. God's precious people said amen. amen. You know, on the program tomorrow, oh, give the Lord a mighty hand. Come on. My God. Let me give you a preview before we go. Yes, please. One statement. One, please. God, every kingdom has subjects, but God's kingdom is a strange kingdom. It's the only kingdom where the citizens are all rulers. That's why he is called the king of kings. kings. Listen, tomorrow a lot more on the program, and he's... I'm going to ask him some other, other questions. I'm just, my soul is bubbling with joy right now. Listen, you're looking at the Ten Commandments. Tablets on a rock that I want you to have in your home to remind your family and you the law of God is important. For a gift of $35 or more, get this today by calling the number on the screen or writing post office box 16, 2000 Irving, Texas. And later, I'm going to have... You send me that nice little thing you wear, the Ten Commandments. Look, it's time we know the law and obey it. Say amen. amen. All right, don't miss the program tomorrow. Another fantastic day from Jerusalem. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.